In one of the previous videos we learned what it was like to be a Sith Lord. So why don't we do the same, but for the so-called good guys? In this video we will learn what it was like to be a Jedi during the war, whether they could engage in romantic relationships and whether they were the good guys or just a power-hungry sect that kidnapped kids. 22 years before the Battle of Yavin, the Clone War was in full swing. Chancellor Palpatine has approved the creation of the Grand Army of the Republic to counter the increasing threat of the Separatists and the Jedi Order is gradually transforming from peacekeepers to generals. The Clone War was a period of intense and violent conflict between the Galactic Republic and the Separatist Alliance that lasted for three years and changed the course of galactic history forever. When the war began, the Jedi were forced to stop sitting in chairs and start working. Their main occupation was participation in the Republic's military campaigns, developing strategies and actively participating in battles on various planets. In addition to active combat, the Jedi often performed political tasks. For example, they acted as diplomats and spread democracy to remote planets, they served as advisors in making political decisions, and some even acted as detectives and solved crimes. Finally, all the Jedi served as teachers and mentors to the next generation of Jedi. Little did they know that most of this generation will be destroyed. This is where the fun begins. Being a Force-sensitive child living in the central part of the galaxy made it almost impossible to hide from the Jedi HR department. The galaxy's smart-ass peacekeepers invented a whole system to locate Force-sensitive children and used it to the fullest extent, at least within the Republic's borders. Newborn babies were given a blood test that analyzed the concentration of midichlorians, special cells that gave them the ability to connect with the Force. Positive results were sent directly to the Jedi Order, where additional tests were conducted. We saw this test in episode 1 The Phantom Menace when Anakin guessed pictures and answered tricky questions from Yoda and Mace Windu. The Jedi Order had legal authority within the Republic to take custody of those who were sensitive to the Force. Some masters believed that if a child displayed Force sensitivity, he or she was already indicating consent to join the Order, even before they could speak. The Jedi believed that every being, regardless of their homeworld, species, wealth or social status, had the potential to be gifted with the Force. They felt a responsibility to teach those who showed this potential how to use this gift so it wouldn't go to waste. Upon acceptance to the Order, young kids were given the title with the lowest chance of survival during Order 66, the Jedi Youngling. The younglings were divided into clans based on their personalities. The bravest went to one clan, the most persistent to another, and so on. When a group of younglings reached a certain age, they went on a journey called the Gathering, where they were guided by the Force to find their lightsaber crystal on the planet Ilum. Upon retrieving the crystal, the Younglings began the process of constructing their first lightsaber. Younglings are basically school students who learn general knowledge about the galaxy, about the Force and about lightsaber combat. Once they completed their basic education program, they had to pass certain trials to become Jedi Padawans. These trials included tests on the Jedi Code, self-discipline, Force abilities and lightsaber combat. The younglings who passed these trials were then apprenticed to a Jedi Knight or Master to advance further in the peacekeeping business, earning the title of Padawan. During the Clone Wars, Padawans were trained in combat and served as military commanders of clone troopers. They worked closely with their masters and learned the Jedi arts on different missions across the galaxy. At this point, a Padawan and master formed a special bond, and some Padawans even considered their masters as fathers and mothers. Eventually, the Padawans learned everything they could from their masters. When the day came, they were ready for the Jedi trials, a series of tests that had to be completed to achieve the rank of Jedi Knight. These trials tested their skills, knowledge and ability to overcome emotional and physical challenges. The Padawan who passed the trials became a fully-fledged Jedi Knight and the Republic General with his own legion of clone troopers. Successful Jedi Knights became Jedi Masters and received the place in the Jedi High Council, the ruling department of the Jedi Order. The oldest and wisest Jedi Masters were given the highest rank possible, which is Jedi Grand Master. These ranks gave more power within the Order and allowed the Jedi to access certain sections within the Jedi Temple to obtain more knowledge. When they weren't training or fighting in battles, the Jedi spent their free time pursuing various interests. Some Jedi spent time in meditation, focusing on their connection with the Force. Although the Jedi Order was more strict compared to the Sith Order, its members could also go to a cantina, have a drink, relax and have some fun, everything in moderation, of course. However, no beautiful Twi'lek girls were allowed. The Jedi Code forbade romantic attachments and possessions, however, there were some exceptions. For example, Jedi's sex symbol, Master Ki Adimundi. Due to his race, social customs and low birth rate for males, Mundi was granted an extremely rare exception to be allowed to marry and have children.
children. He had five wives and a total of seven daughters. It was definitely more fun for him than for the rest of the order. Despite being seen as the good guys, the Jedi Order had its flaws, which ultimately led to its downfall. The Jedi were too focused on their own dogmatic beliefs that they failed to see the bigger picture. This led to arrogance and the lack of trust in others, even their most gifted member, Anakin Skywalker, which proved to be fatal in the end. So what do you think? Were the Jedi that guys with lust for power, urge to kidnap kids and a bunch of restrictions, or they were nice and friendly? If you want to know more about the real Force users, check out this video about the life of a Sith Lord, because they definitely had more cool stuff in their lives. See ya!